Hey guys, it's been forever since I've done a video and in the last few weeks I've been kind of lost in the depths of booktube and I've just been inspired to um, read a ton of classics and as a result I've been trying to pick some up whenever I go out and so today I thought I would share a book haul with you that I've kind of got in the last month or so just like a fall book haul um, almost all of these books I bought uh, secondhand, uh, with the exception, I think, of just a box set. So most of them have been secondhand, and they've cost me between 20 cents a book, and I think I paid $3 for some, maybe a little bit more for one or two. That's it. Um, so they're just about all classics, I think, with the exception of a couple. And let's just get started. So the first um, thing I actually bought was this book set, and it's an Agatha Christie um, book set. Now, I bought it because we were going to do The Murder of Roger Ackroyd for my Classics Book Club coming up in November. Um, so I was going to buy just that book, and then I saw I could buy a book set of three for, um, I think one was $15, three was 30 or I could buy seven for 50 So totally suckered me in. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, I'm also just getting over a cold, so that's unfortunate. Uh, so it has The Murder, Murder of Roger Ackroyd, which I actually read the weekend that I got the, book, the set because I can't help myself when it comes to her books. <clears throat> Other than that, there's also The Murder on the Orient Express and uh, Mysterious Affair at Styles. I think, well, I know I've read The Orient, Ex Orient Express, and I'm pretty sure I've read the other one, but then these other ones I've never read. Um, there's Curtain, Five Little Pigs, Hercule Perrault's Christmas, and the ABC Murders. So, um, I'm excited to like dive into all of these. And I'm going to totally reread the ones that I have read before as well. So that was my first purchase. So that one was from Amazon, not a thrift pickup. Now, um, some of these I got from my local library sale. This is one of them. This is Anne Lamott's Traveling Mercies. Now, I've never read any of her stuff, and I have no idea what to expect, but I hear it being raved about all the time by people that I admire online, so I thought I'd give it a try. Um, this was from the library sale, and their books were six for a dollar, so I got this for 20 cents, so it's worth a shot. This one is also one I got from there. This is The Fault in Our Stars. Normally, I don't buy modern books, like contemporary books, um, especially contemporary fiction, but I've heard about this one a lot, and I wanted to read it anyway, and it was only 20 cents, so I couldn't pass it up. So that one I also purchased. Uh, this one, I don't remember which store I got it at, but this is Jude the Obscure, Obscure. And I've been hearing a lot about Thomas Hardy, and I've never read any of his books. So hopefully this will be my introduction to him, and I'm hoping to get to this one uh, hopefully at the end of October here, or else at the beginning of November. Uh, here's The Great Gatsby. I've never read this one. I think I started listening to the audio a few years ago and just couldn't get into it. But now that I have the actual hard copy, I'm going to definitely read it. Uh, and then here's another Hardy book that I got secondhand, and this is Tess of the Duberbells. Now, I have heard this one raved about a lot, a lot. And I was debating between starting this one first or Jude the Obscure. I don't really know. Which one should I start with? I hear from what I seem to find online, this one's better, but more people say start with this one. So maybe I'll start with this one and then get into the better one. We'll see. Next up uh, is some Jane Austen. This is Northanger Abbey, La uh, also has Lady Susan, the Watsons, and Sandi Sanditon? I've never heard of that one. Um, I do have another copy of Northanger Abbey, but it's a lot bigger, so I thought this would be a good one plus the other books that are included I don't have. So because um, this is 200 years this year from her publishing Northanger Abbey and Persuasion, I want to hopefully read those two books before the end of the year. Uh, I only have two and a half months left, so we'll see. Hopefully. I want to hopefully read this one in November. Then, another classic that I got is uh, George Eliot's The Mill on the Floss. And this is another one I've heard a little bit about. I'm looking forward to reading. I've never read any of her stuff, 
and I think this is the only one of hers that I found recently, so I'm looking forward to that one. Moving on. Oh, I got Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, something I've also never read. I read a lot of, I think, Canadian classics in university. My minor is actually in English, um, but I didn't really enjoy any of the books that I read. So I'm looking forward to reading a lot of these classics. That's another one of them. Oh, and then because I just wanted to go bake or go home, I got the Iliad and the Odyssey. So these ones will be a little farther down the road, but eventually, hopefully I'll get to them. I think they were, like, I got them both for a dollar together, so 50 cents a piece. Couldn't really pass that up. Ooh, and another one that I will probably wait a little while to get to, Anna Karenina. I've never read any Tolstoy, but when I lived in England, um, the family that I was an au pair for, one of their cat's names was Tolstoy, so it seems fitting that I should actually read one of his books. Oh man, the writing is tiny too. So, eventually, maybe January, February, when life is looking bleak, then I'll turn to this. Oh, here's, I got this awesome Austin collection. It has Pride and Prejudice, Northanger Abbey, Persuasion, and Emma. Now, I do have Northanger Abbey, which I also found, and I have another copy of Pride and Prejudice and Emma, which are just small ones, but I don't have Persuasion, and this one is just a beautiful book, so I couldn't pass it up. Although, that being said, I'm not really a huge Austin fan. I think, I don't think it's her fault. I think I just don't like the time period, and all that women did in my mind was sit there and talk about how much money men made. Um, I guess it was important, it needed to be, I don't know, I just definitely glad I wasn't bored in that era. But maybe if I keep rereading her stuff, I'll eventually like it. Okay, moving on. This is the best poems of the English language. I haven't looked at this one at all yet. I just wanted to read more poetry. I don't even know who's all included in here. Let's see, Canterbury Tales. Oh man, there's lots. Shakespeare, I haven't heard of a lot of these people. Sir Walter Raleigh. I've actually heard, not heard of most of these people. I mean, I'm not huge into poetry anyway, but William Blake, William Wordsworth. John Keats, okay. So there is some people I've heard of before. Ralph Waldo Emerson, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, Edgar Allan Poe. Okay, so they're just farther down here. Emily Dickinson, Walt Whitman. Oh yeah, okay. So, oh, they even Thomas Hardy is in here. D.H. Lawrence, Lewis Carroll, Edward Lear, Emily Bronte. There's a lot in here. Okay, well, so I'm gonna read some poetry. I don't know how I'm gonna read this one. Maybe, depending how long it, I mean, each poem is different. Maybe I'll try like a poem a day in the winter or something, or pick out some favorite poets and go from there. But this one, yeah, this was from the library. So this was a 20 cent buy. So I don't think I'm losing either way. And then speaking of poetry, I also have the poetry of Jane Austen and the Austen family. And I don't know anything about Austin poetry, but this was a library sale pickup as well. So that'll be good, I think. Then I have some Elizabeth Gaskell. This is Mary Barton, which I've not heard anything about her step, um, this book, really. I've heard about Elizabeth Gaskell, but I haven't really heard anything about this one. So I feel like this is maybe not one of the ones people feel the most strongly about when it comes to Elizabeth Gaskell's work. And then I have Wuthering Heights, which if you follow me on Instagram, I actually just finished. Um, I was reading this one for um, Victober and I have read Jane Eyre. But other than that, this is my only Bronte book that I've ever read and I really enjoyed it. I think I was just super excited that it was 
not like an Austin book, that there was something other than just sitting around waiting for a rich man to come marry you. Um, which is weird because it doesn't seem like the kind of book I would really enjoy, but I did. And sorry, I'm totally losing my voice again. <clears throat> then I got The Old Curiosity Shop by Dickens. Dickens, Dickens. I don't know how I feel about Dickens. I've read Oliver Twist and Christmas Carol and enjoyed those. And then I read A Tale of Two Cities. Not a huge fan. Did not like that one. And I know that he was paid by the word. So I'm thinking he got paid really well for this book. And I'm not sure I'm gonna like that. I kinda like his shorter ones. So we'll see. I actually, I don't know anything about this one. I also have great expectations on my shelf that I need to read yet, still from him. So that one, this one will probably come after that. And then I have some nonfiction. I have Florence Nightingale, The Making of a Radical Theologian. We read um, a few different books from Florence Night about Florence Nightingale in our homeschool this year. We read a small one. I don't even know what series that was from. And then we read the Christian Heroes Then and Now book. And so I've just enjoyed reading about Florence Nightingale. And then I saw this one at the library for 20 cents. And I'm curious to see a little bit more into her life. And then another nonfiction that I picked up at the library sale was Mary, Queen of Scots. And this is an illustrated life. So, oh, someone bent the page. That's what happens when you buy a secondhand book. Oh, illustration, illustration's are really cool. I don't know anything about this time period. So, we'll see. I'm curious about it though. It looks like a really nice book. And then I have um, three books that I bought that are a little bit more children's lit, I guess. Well, this is Ellen Montgomery's Jane of Lantern Hill. Now, as a Canadian, I don't know if I should admit that I've only read the first book of Anne of Green Gables and nothing else of hers. I did start Emily of New Moon a few years ago and I never finished it. And so my goal for 2019 is to read all of her books or to have read all of her books by the end of 2019. I'm not sure if that's really a good goal or not, but um, I think I can find her stuff secondhand quite a bit in the thrift stores. So I'm looking forward to that. And we'll see how Jane of Lantern Hill is. I don't know anything about this book. And then I also got The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and I realized afterwards that it's an abridged copy. Um, I believe. Yes, this impression, 1969 abridged. So that disappointed me when I got it home. <clears throat> but it's, um, it's a cute little cover. And, oh yes, so then the second, the last um, children's lit I got was actually Mary Queen of Scots, and this is the Royal Diaries, which I am collecting for our homeschool anyway. I have Mary An Marie Antoinette and Anastasia as well. So this one will get put onto that pile, and we'll read it when we get to that time period in our history. Okay, <clears throat> now my voice is going, and I've shown you all the books that I've bought in the last, well, I shouldn't even tell you, month? Probably about one a month. Okay. How's that for a visual? So I've got, I've got some reading to do this month. No, not this month. This month is almost over. I've got some reading to do this winter. Is it bad to say that I'm actually hoping for a cold Saskatchewan winter? Wish me luck. <laughs>